Welcome. In this episode, we're going to talk about paternity fraud, a man's nightmare, and how to stop it. Primarily, we're going to focus on Tennessee because apparently Tennessee's having uh, somewhat of a major uh, paternity problem. So let's talk about paternity fraud. What exactly is paternity fraud? Well, paternity fraud, according to the laws in Tennessee, is a presumption of paternity that affects unwed couples. That is, the father of an un, you know of a you know unwed couple, his fatherhood, uh, the dad, his status is called as challenged or rebuttable. And in order to correct his status as a father, he ha he's required to do what is called file legal action. Yes. He has to file legal. Now here's a tweet uh, from the uh, Instagram channel Dad Talk today, and I'm not focused on the name of this uh, a woman on a tweet, more of her message. This is what she wrote: "Men, if DNA confirms the baby's not yours, it doesn't change the fact that you must take responsibility of the baby." Women go through a lot and got a lot in marriages, and women deserve better. So look at your attention as how many people like this tweet, 491. So technically about 500 people like this, this tweet. Now I'm not here to throw shade at her, uh, I'm just pointing out that the comment is liked. Now apart from the fact that it's somewhat illogical, but hey, you know, this is her opinion. So the question is how many women believe that this statement is true and that we should continue to do that where these men they're not their children but they should continue to pay child support so in the state of tennessee they have about seven million people and if you're involved in a child support program and you're unmarried you're in a group called acknowledgement of paternity and there are approximately forty one thousand people inside that group now of the men inside that group Again, this is from a projection and the research. About 30% of those men who are in the acknowledge of attorney paying child support, the, the child is not their biological child. Yes, it's about 30%. Now, statewide, they haven't published any numbers statewide uh, who are actually, again, fathering children that are not theirs. Now, let's take a contrast between the previous video that I did, which is drunk drivers. And it goes like this, that if a drunk driver kills a parent, that drunk driver is responsible for paying the child support for that child up till the age of 18. So go ahead and preview that video. I, I go more detail into it. But think of this. Last, in 2021, approximately 1,300 people were involved in car wreck, what is called fatal car wreck. So they passed this law unanimously that affects 1,300 people. However, paternity fraud that affects apparently 30% of the 40,000, 41,000, oh, we are going to put that one on hold. So here we are. Hello, my name is Chris. And in this session, we're going to highlight one of those silent problems that plague men in the child support system called paternity fraud. And we're going to focus primarily on Tennessee. This is a problem in many states, uh, but Tennessee is starting to move forward into resolving this problem, as well as uh, how you, if you are a part of this fraternity fraud, what solution we have. In addition, we've been talking a lot about repairing your credit report and we're going to continue to do so because our goal is to move you towards financial freedom once you have freed yourself from child support as always if you have any comments 
please leave them down in, in our section or send us an email. Uh, we'd, we'd be happy to answer your question. We also ask for donation to keep this channel going. We provide the research, we take the time out to do this, and what we're asking for is a small donation. We ask for a $25 gift. However, we'll take a $5 cash app or anything that you can spare, and the goal is so that we can continue to provide you with the research. You can follow us on your favorite podcast, Amazon, Spotify, or Apple. So let's start the story regarding paternity fraud. Now, I didn't create the story, nor did we follow the story. We actually picked it up on a YouTube channel called Roland Martin Unfilter. It's a Deji did a little new show. Uh, it's entertaining as well. And that's where we saw the story and we decided to expand on it. Now, Martin Unfilters, they're not paying me for this uh, promotion. Uh, I'm not being compensated in any way. I wanted to give him the credit for starting the conversation on the topic, and we're just going to expand on it. Also, stop by his channel. Watch a few of the episodes. It's very entertaining and very informative. So let's look at this Tennessee code called the Parentage, uh, parentage Code, or Parentage and Legitimation. It's 36 dash 2 dash 304 is called presumption of parentage that is a man is rebuttably presumed to be the father of the child that is if you're unmarried or unwed you're presumed to be the father you're actually not the father until you go through what is called uh, legal process right and that legal process is called legitimation and in other words, to establish your rights as the true father of the child. Now, we have this problem also in Georgia. I did a video called, What is Legitimacy, uh, Legitimacy or Legitimation in the State of Georgia? And it's slightly different than Tennessee, so when you get a chance, check out that video as well. Now, we talked earlier about the acknowledgement of paternity. I did a whole video on that. If you want to know the details of what it is, how it works, uh, check out th uh, that video called Who's Your Daddy? Acknowledgement of Paternity. So this representative from the state of Tennessee has introduced a new bill. That new bill by Representative Antonia Parkinson. It proposed that to protect Tennessee's parents from paternity fraud, in order for the father to sign the birth certificate, he must produce the DNA results. Yes, he must produce a DNA results if he wants to sign the birth certificate for the child. Now, you would say, wait a minute, isn't that part of the process of submitting to a DNA test before? Well, no, that's not what the law says. The law has a different policy, and we'll cover that. So, uh, Representative Parkinson is trying to put this bill in forward. And basically, it is that it's Bill 2698 in the House, and Bill 1777 in the Senate. And it requires an unwed father to produce a DNA test and then submit that into the vital records before signing the birth certificate. Now, this particular vote on this bill was scheduled for March 17, 2022. However, at this time, it has been stalled in committee. Uh, there are discrepancies in, in issues regarding it, and we're gonna tell you what the reasons are. You'll be surprised. So here is the process for legitimation and the challenge for fatherhood in the state of Tennessee. So when there's a parentage between unwed mother and father, a judge has to do as declare the parentage without the genetic testing, and that's 36-2-305. And the judge then declare that this man is now the father of the child. Well, here's where the, the problem starts in. What if later on that the man is not the biological child after all? What do you do? Unfortunately, if the law says that he is the father, he remains that way. So here's the solution to that problem in the bill, and it's House Bill 2698. So they would put a provision in that says, a party may seek DNA testing 
outside of the court process and use that as evidence to prove whether he is the father. Because until that happens, once the judge declares him the father, he remains the father. If later on it turns out he's not the biological father, well, unfortunately, that cannot change unless you go back to court and get a change. And the courts are very reluctant not to alter that ruling because then they look at it's kind of embarrassing, right? Now, this bill was scheduled to start uh, this summer. However, if it doesn't pass, then that's a problem. So here's a picture of the Senate committee on the bill. This is fair use, uh, where News Channel 5, Action 5, is a picture that talks about this bill. And part of the issue is they want to make it mandatory that this process of a DNA is conducted. But there is a problem. It is stalled in committee. There are drawbacks. There's issues with it. And there's many debate over whether or not this bill should pass. Now remember, the drunk driving bill passed unanimously, and that only affects 1,300, potential 1,300 people. This bill affects more than 20,000, and yet it's having trouble pass, passing the, the legislators. Why is that? Why is it a problem passing this bill? Well, here's the issue. Okay. The Tennessee Department of Human Services, DHS, who oversees the child support program, which is also known as Federal Title IV-D, is fighting the vigorously to kill this bill. Again, the child support program, Title IV-D, is vigorously fighting to kill this bill. Well, why is that? Well, first off, their policy is you should be careful what you agree to. In other words, once a judge declares you the father, you remain the father. That's it, right? The other secondary reason is through research, we found that the reason why Title IV-D child support do not want this corrected, it's because it will jeopardize $52 million in funding it receives from the federal government. Yes, this is all about the money. Not about correcting the problem, not about following the due process for these men. It's all about the federal funding. As you know, child support is a federal program that is funded by the federal government for the states to carry out or execute child support. So for those of you who know, child support is not a state program. It is a federal program. And in this case, this is $52 million is at stake. And the child support and their operations are willing to continue this draconian measure to save $52 million. So Now let's look at the overall, what they call, reimbursement to the state. So over the last five years, Tennessee received somewhere in the neighborhood of $600 million. And that uh, case, that uh, code, or federal code, is administrative wage garnishment 45 CFR 32. That is, they report to Congress what is called the funding from the Title IV-D program. So they're on target if this bill passes to lose 53 million dollars no wonder there's such uh, what you call resistance to making this happen so in essence I call this extortion I mean we need to correct this wrong it is wrong however the money is what's driving it so these men were trapped in this paternity fraud what are their solution well one solution is they could file a lawsuit, but not all lawsuits are successful. There are many men who've tried it, but again, they're blocked because the law is what the law says. Now, for those of you that are in this problem, feel free to reach out to us. We have additional research regarding lawsuits and remedy, and, and it's too detailed for us to cover, cover this in this presentation, but understand that, yes, there are many lawsuits 
Uh, some are not successful, but there's some key things that you could learn if you are involved in this paternity fraud in Tennessee. So, to summarize, the goal is to stop this ongoing paternity fraud in Tennessee with this with this bill, and hopefully they would sort of the legislature would look at it and says this is being fair to the men, in addition to being fair to the women. Now the tweet I showed earlier where the woman says, well, it doesn't matter, you know, they should just still take care of it. Again, that's not a solution, and it cannot be an ongoing solution. Uh, also, there's paternity fraud in other states as well. So this problem needs to be resolved, whether it's state by state or nationwide. Also, we have other solutions on our master class, which is child support dot newzendler.com you file other things such as we're suggesting that you repair your credit yes we are heading into a recession it's unfortunate but it's real and one of the things you should do is repair your financial situation and that starts with your credit report if you have any comments or thoughts or concerns Please, please feel free to list them here on the channel. In addition, we ask you to subscribe to our channel as well as press the notification bell. If you are new, new here, please join us in you know, reaching more, uh, more people to learn about what's happening in your states, as well as help us to continue our research. And for that reason, we ask for donations. We take any all small donations. We're asking for a $25 gift, but if you have a smaller amount, we'd be happy to accept it. So this brings us to the end of our presentation, and thank you. And as always, the goal of this is to stop paternity fraud in Tennessee.